about it and ideas of peace but from like personal examples there was a bombing right down the block from my house and I basically just woke up everyone asked me if I was alive and I went back to sleep right it, it doesn't really <laughs> plague me every day that I need to achieve perpetual peace I have conversations at home which talk about how the US is always going to be in this territory because they want to create an instability it's like they've resolved to the fact and given up that there is never going to be peace in this area and basically it's something that my mother says, my grandmother says, it's been around for that long. And I find that none of us are actually talking about it on an individual, everyday kind of level because we've just resigned to it the way that it is. Yeah, it's true. is having freedom. And uh, this, freedom, uh, this freedom is uh, to not cross any, anyone else's freedom. This is uh, being able to walk around uh, without any fear. Thank you. Uh, I think peace is very interlinked with justice. Uh, justice with your society and justice with yourself. Okay. Uh, well, I think peace is something... It's, it's a kind of a freedom that you know that... Uh, you can still be yourself and um, move around freely in the city, express yourself and uh, know that uh, no one is going to be angry at you for holding the views that you have or for being what you are. Thank you. The often unheard voices I've just shared with you are those of Pakistani and Afghani students in Lahore, Pakistan speaking about what peace means to them, recording each other. If you take one thing away from this presentation, I hope it's their voices online on our project's website. Their comments add another dimension to the broader understanding of peace that the Perpetual Peace Project seeks to cultivate and emerge from a series of public programs and workshops involving students, artists, and social theorists that I recently led there in September as a United States cultural envoy. Their remarks respond to Pakistan's current situation as a weak state, one subject to cultural and religious conflict as well as acts of terrorism, not to mention a security apparatus that together severely limits public freedoms, basic freedoms such as walking outside or bicycling. These workshops were part of the larger Perpetual Peace Project, an initiative without end, structured around a series of questions concerning the idea of peace and its evisceration in a time of security and global conflict. What does peace mean today to you? A basic question that I ask you to consider in the days ahead. Can peace be defined only by the temporary cessation of hostilities in a global situation that implies the possibility of eternal war? Eternal war or can we construct a more intimate and everyday definition? And then there's the question of justice, as one of the students in the recordings mentioned. Is it acceptable that peace always be reserved for those fortunate enough to live through a time of peace or in a peaceful province? while the rest of humanity suffers from war and devastation. The Perpetual Peace Project is a partnership between the Slot Foundation, an experimental organization that I direct in Philadelphia, the European Union National Institutes of Culture, the International Peace Institute, the United Nations University, and Syracuse University Humanities Center. This collaboration speaks to the importance of being implicated by and actively seeking out other collaborators placing oneself as a cultural producer in political situations of compromise that redefines the nature of one's practice and the language that one uses. In a typical manner for us at SLOT, the project has developed collaboratively, not just with institutions but with individuals, filmmakers, designers, philosophers, and diplomats. Laura Hanna, one of those filmmakers, is here with us today. The project finds its public form in a variety of ongoing initiatives organized around and inspired by Immanuel Kant's foundational essay, Perpetual Peace, from 1795, which itself takes the form of an international treaty exploring the possibility of permanent peace and which has served as the very basis for the establishment of our partner institutions charters. The United Nations would be one example. Kant's essay opens with the ironic image of a Dutch inn 
whose sign reads the perpetual peace, while its rooms offer a view of the cemetery of the adjoining courtyard. The only perpetual peace we have ever known is the peace of the grave, he reminds us, which is to say peace is always defined negatively, such that we can never experience it in this life. With this project, we aspire towards a more positive definition. Later in the text, Kant introduces a secret article which reads, the maxims of the philosophers regarding the conditions of the possibility of a public peace shall be taken into consideration by the states that are armed for war. The reason for this secret article is that it may not be compatible with the dignity of certain politically involved persons to publicly acknowledge the idea of peace. In a climate of outright scorn and mockery, the one we're living through today as well, one in which the mention of the idea of perpetual peace would not be entertained in the media or in public courts of power. Kant's secret article contains the conditions for the idea to be considered silently and conversationally. He is proposing not just a theory of private curation, but a more holistic relationship between the disciplines, wherein the philosopher and the statesman consult and are implicated by each other's arguments. And whatever our personal relationships to the idea of the nation state, however selfish, nefarious we may think the nation state is, it remains a crucial vehicle today to take seriously if we take the idea of peace seriously. Clearly, our project has um, a somewhat unattainable, a seemingly unattainable goal, namely international peace. But what it aspires to do at its simplest is begin, as Kant himself proposed, a conversation with those philosophers who engage with the idea of peace, with those practitioners who participate directly in the world of geopolitical conflict, with those governing bodies who have the power to truly make a peace, peace a sustainable reality, and with those, with those unheard voices which are always excluded and in fact constitute civil society itself. Whether this conversation happens in the public halls of cultural institutions or government offices, in cafes or living rooms, newspapers or blogs, our project seeks to restart this discourse without worrying where it will end. If this project can be thought to succeed, it will take the form of a continued conversation among these individuals, within these institutions, and in the public sphere more generally, without our assistance and beyond our prompting long after our last events have been staged. Throughout, we have been inspired by Kant's notion of publicity, whereby the mere act of introducing or proposing again an idea, of making an idea public, is itself understood to be truly powerful. Our multiple initiatives in this project each propose this idea in another way. So very quickly, you've just been looking at uh, the book that we've republished. Uh, we've republished it in the French fold tradition of Kant's time with Project Projects, a graphic design firm here in New York. The blank pages interspersed in the book are sealed. You cut them to reveal the text within. Uh, it's also online. Uh, we are also bringing in November in the form of a private workshop at the International Peace Institute at the United Nations, heads of state and philosophers together uh, for one day. Uh, the media are excluded from this event. Um, and for an ex as an example, the Minister of Defense in Austria is attending. We've devised an installation at the New Museum. It just opened this week. It's up through January. We hope that you'll go and see it. We've reclaimed the ancillary and circulation space of the museum for film programs and for the shared public arena. Uh, we're scheduling events, but please show up and organize your own. Uh, we've been producing a feature film. Selections are online. Uh, they're really moving. Uh, you can hear members of the Security Council. You can hear philosophers speaking about what peace means to them and what they mean by change. It doesn't always mean what we think it means in the cultural community where change plays out ideally overnight. Sometimes it takes decades or longer. There are major principles of the project. You can visit those online. I'm not going to go through them. At its simplest, though, um, we do not seek to define peace with our project. We seek to create a space where others can define it. And please visit us online. Um, participate in the project. Share it with others. And uh, we hope we'll hear from you soon. Thank you.